artwork for this this new show, The Diary of a Mad Black Artist, I thought I thought back and I thought back to that time that that we met. You were the first black man I've ever met that was in the mental health space. Really? I don't think I ever told you that. Mm. And like on my journey, because this is still I still consider it to be somewhat new for me because, you know, in my 30s, it's just been this kind of like re retooling and understanding of like masculinity, manhood, what all of these things mean through this new lens of now being a father and a community leader. But like understanding that in order for me to do all of these things, like I got to be. You got to change the thing. I got to be whole. Yeah. I got to be healed. You ready to go there yet? Like, I... Yeah. I got tons of... Yeah, right? I'm... So, I'm going to help get us through because this is a very important conversation. Right. So, yes, we met for the art show. No, nah, we always understood the importance of our artwork in terms of, like, our storytelling mm-hmm. and preserving the narrative. But I think that over the last few years, you've seen more artists specifically understand that we need to be more intentional about the type of art that we're making and type of stories that we're telling and the way that we're preserving our narrative, Mm -hmm. right? So when you talk about black men, mental health, the stigma that goes along, absolutely. Constantly wrestling with all of these ideas and paradigms, right? Mm -hmm. Understanding that, yeah, there's a king in every single one of us, but understanding that there are entire systems in this country that have been built upon not just our oppression, but our subjugation Mm -hmm. in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. The whole idea is the world doesn't want to see us whole. Mm -hmm. The world doesn't want to see us heal. Because when we're broken, you know what I mean? We're more valuable. Exactly. We're more valuable to the prison industrial complex. Mm -hmm. We're more valuable to these drug companies that want to keep keep us doped up rather than actually see us find healing. So when I started my, my journey towards, you know, emotional wellness because that's the thing I don't like just talking about mental health I think that we need to just talk about the journey that we're all on towards emotional wellness because too much of our time is spent dwelling on our pain and sitting in our trauma but when do we ever find our way towards happiness when do we ever find our way towards healing when do we ever find our way towards each other and reconciliation like that's something that has always been important to me and I feel like I use my artwork as a platform to really try to open up the space that we have that kind of dialogue but I would feel like that. a I would I appreciate it but I felt like a hypocrite most of the time though that I'm putting out these pieces of art but I'm struggling and I'm and not turning. Whole. yeah and I think I call you were one of the first people that I actually called when I was just trying to figure things out like yo like how do I find a therapist? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like how do I, how do I get in front of somebody that can help me work out what I'm dealing with inside? Yeah. Because I don't know. Yeah. I never, I never learned how to do that. Yeah. And we as black men don't really have other brothers that we can reach out to, and and ask stuff like that and be vulnerable with. You yeah. realize how scared I was to make oh, that call, bro? bro? Like, listen. yeah, listen, you, you're speaking to because we're. We're thinking about being judged. Yeah. We're thinking about not even just being judged. The fact that we have to, at some point now, face our own devils. That we have to face, like, we have to speak on it now. We can suppress it. We can. What was scary for me is being seen, even by somebody who I consider to be a friend. Yeah. As something other than strong. Got it. You know what I'm saying? Like. We ready? This idea that you could see me. And see me as I am. Mm-hmm. It's vulnerable. Feeling weak, feeling no. inadequate, it's feeling because we've always our maladaptive coping skill has consistently been. Let's just put this bravado on that we're strong, then nobody would fuck with us, right? Nobody would come and try to see what's up with us because you ain't about to get that close to me. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, like, right. And I'm gonna project this, but. That's just, like I said, that's a maladaptive coping skill, right? That's learned behavior and something that we've learned to deflect. But when you reach out to someone and say, hey, yo, you you got to be, you're, you're being forced to be in a place to be vulnerable because now I really have to share that I, 
I, I have struggles as well. And I think that more people, more, more often that people actually have those conversations, they'll realize we all have struggles. Right. You know what I'm saying? We all go through these things. Like, I'm Imagine. seeing this without me identifying it to myself as weak. But I'm actually stronger when I can articulate what I feel and I don't have to mask it. And I can let you know you hurt me without me feeling any way about it. That's the but true that's strength. what I was dealing with at that time, right? This, I was in my 30s before I could actually tell somebody else, this thing that you said, this thing that you did to me, this hurt me. It took me until I was in my 30s to realize that, yo, you're projecting so much on everybody else right now because in my mind, right, for me to even say, yo, you hurt me, that gave you some kind of power over, over me. And I refused, you know you got to me. And I refused as a man to give any other man or woman that kind of power mm -hmm. to be able to think that you could say or do something. In my mind, I, I was the... I'm the guy, I was the NFL player. I was the All-American athlete. Yeah. I was the, you know what I mean? I'm the guy that everybody else looks to to solve their problems. Like, I can't not have this cape on. Yeah. I can't not be invincible. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm not invincible, if I'm not this guy, who, what am I worth to anybody? If I can't, mm -hmm. if, if this idea of this strong man that I built myself up to be mm -hmm. is false, then who am I? What am I worth? Where wow. where's my value? That's that's, that's the inadequacy that I was feeling mm -hmm. and it hurt me so much just to be just to have to admit that to somebody else. Yeah. So I struggled with that internally. Yeah. And tried to put on a front like everything was fine. And yeah. you know, and, and so sense. many brothers do that. They I walk around tough every day, like I can't let you know you hurt me, you know? Right. And And because of that we can't come, we can't find reconciliation. Exactly. So we become estranged from one another yeah, bro, or we you, fight each other or we kill each other. Like when you get that ego stripped from you and you have to be completely vulnerable and be honest with yourself, like, yo, I did this to someone else, right? Right. So instead of me acting just high and mighty, whatever else, above all, I have to be real with myself, like, yo, what you did was effed up. Mm -hmm. And it hurts someone, right? Right. And we got to start there. So, so, in keeping with the theme of, of Diary of a Mad Black Artist, I think it, it's so in tune with the conversation that we're having, right? Because at the end this of the day... This three hours right now. Yeah. This could, we could go. This, it, no. and we got to, and we got to end it. And it should. But... At the end of the oh, day, he's saying no, it can't be. I'm saying no, like realistically. No, 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 no. The, if we unpack, like, this we is feel. what. But this is what the show. This is what the show is going to be. When you talked about journaling, you talked about this idea of. Yo, you figuring should have out, people at the show, like a therapist, that's journaling and got like composition books, passing them out to people as they come around. I'm doing. Write to me I'm doing one that better like, than. I'm doing one better than that. You're gonna have pieces of my journals. And pieces of, of my unpacking of my Ooh. state of mental health all littered through the artwork. So you have certain mixed media pieces where they're pieces of my books in their early stages. They're and pieces of about my poetry you and about my how journals you about how I was feeling mm. in my process That's to strong. becoming. That's strong. Which and you should was have more there. vulnerable than I've ever been with That's any strong. piece of artwork that I like. This is obviously my most personal show that I've ever released, That's and strong. it's taken me some years to get it to this point because I really was wrestling with that internal struggle.